Okay, I have a really fun project for you that looks a lot harder than it is, which is my favorite kind. And I want to just remind you before we get started that you can do whatever you want with this. You can do different colors. You can do different designs. This is just a guide for you. Even if you just follow along with me here, then you can come later and do something completely different and just kind of practice what I'm doing here and then do your own thing. So we're just using three colors for this one. So we've got our cadmium red, we're using our alizarian crimson, and our sap green. Okay, so I like to mix these two reds together, more of this alizarian crimson than the um, cadmium, just to get a nice deep, but a really nice bright red. We'll just get some of this down so we've got it. And we'll add a little bit of that cadmium, a little more of that alizarian, and give us a nice bright, beautiful red. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is just a light coat of our two colors. So I'm just gonna come in with that red and just do a very light wash. Just using the belly of my brush to get a nice wash going. And then the tip of my brush on some of those skinnier, hard to reach areas. This is still too dark for me. So I'm gonna come in with a thirsty brush and lift some of that color off. And just move it around a little bit. Don't worry too much if we get a little bit out of the lines. Remember, these lines are just guides to help you with your shapes and your patterns. Okay. I like that. We'll go ahead and do the same thing with our green. So the technique that we're using for this one is called layering or glazing. That's basically where you're starting with a nice light coat and then you're going to build up with layers of paint. Okay, there's our green. All right. And while I'm thinking about it, let's go ahead and just use the very tip of our brush here. And I'm gonna do a red string for my green one. And a green string for my red one. Okay, so once those are done, I just want to make sure that this is perfectly dry before I am going to add my next layer. Because if I don't, if it's not totally dry, then it's going to bleed all over the place. So you just want to touch it. If you don't get any paint when you touch it, then you're, you're good. Okay. All right, so I'm just going to look at my, my pattern here. And I'm going to go to town. Again, you can do whatever you want with your pattern. You can follow me or you can do your own thing. I love the color on color that's happening in these stockings. It's so fun.
just going really carefully with the tip of my brush in some of those skinnier areas. If you feel like you don't have a lot of control over your paint, that just means that you probably have a little too much paint on your brush and you can just dab your paper towel and get a little bit of that excess paint and water off and that really helps. You feel like you have a little more control. Okay, I'm going to come right down to this guy. using the tip of my brush again in those small areas. This makes me curious about your stockings. Do you have a tradition with stockings? Do you have the same ones every year? Do you um, change them out? I made stockings when, let's see, the twins were probably five. Nora was four and Ollie was two. No, it must have been the year before that. Anyway, they were little. And I made these really pretty stockings. And I love getting them out every year. I remember it was a very long process and a lot of work. But it's one of those things that it's when it's done, it's done. And you can enjoy it. Kind of like watercolor. You can enjoy it for years and years. I would love to see the stockings you have in your home. You'll have to share that with me if you think about it. Just kind of following all those little lines. And then I'm going to put some polka dots there in the middle. Get a little more red. Okay, got that one done. Let's move on to our green. I'm get a bunch of green on my palette here. Move this up just a little bit. It's beautiful sap green. And let's see, I'm gonna start at the top here. Go around these little guys with the tip of my brush. This will be very good practice for your brush work as you do these little skinny areas. 
Don't get too frustrated if it doesn't look the way you had it in your mind. Just kind of work with what you've got and improvise as you go. Got a line that we're gonna follow. And another one. Nice thing about this project is no matter what, it's gonna look cool because you've got this cool layering technique going. We'll do little lines here. I'm going to do half of that, color in half of that. Bring that down. I'm just going to follow these lines. Brush. Put in little crisscrosses. Now I'm going to put some little dots in here just to add some interest. Okay. So if you would like to be done at this point, you can, or you can do what I'm going to do and just outline everything. Um, I did that on this and it just kind of gives it a little more depth and makes those colors just a little darker. But I love how this looks too, so you can decide what you want. I'm gonna go ahead and outline. Just a reminder, most people don't need this, but every once in a while I have to remind myself to start with the areas that are dry with your Sharpie pen, just so you don't ruin your pen. So I'm just gonna kinda of fill around. Those areas are still wet. So this down here is pretty dry, so I'm gonna start there. Okay, I've got mine all outlined and I think I'm gonna call this one done. I hope you enjoyed this one. I can't wait to see what you did and I can't wait to hang my stocking up for Christmas. I hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.